Welcome to Medical Monday here. Welcome back, everybody. Happy we're Monday. Gonna, we're going to be talking about headaches. headaches. Headaches is a big topic for a lot of patients. There's so many different categories and subcategories of headaches, it gets confusing. Yes. We're going to talk about the four big ones. So there's four main categories of headaches. Mm -hmm. We've got migraine, um, cluster, secondary, and tension headaches. tension headaches. So you see there's a wide range of headaches out there. Those are the four big ones. Those are about 90% of all the types of headaches that are out there, or for us that we have. Mm -hmm. So migraines are the number one diagnosed headache, Correct. but it's not the number one headache that people have. The number one headache that most people have is tension headaches. A tension headache, yep. yes. But people normally don't go to the doctor or they don't seek care for a tension headache because it's rather featureless yes. as it's described. It's nothing more than just a simple headache. So there's a difference in the headaches, mm -hmm. and we'll run through those. Yes, and the tension headaches are the most common and least treated because typically they're also short term. So a tension headache comes with a big project at work, or it comes with having, um, you know, if, if you were me over the holiday weekend, um, having extra kids at your house. You know, there's a lot in regards to what causes tension headaches, and they're typically actually short lived um, and very un. un um, Uneventful. Um, uneventful. Yeah, they're they're non-throbbing, very mild, and uh, like I talked about, is rather uneventful. Mm -hmm. So we also have migraines. So migraines are the most commonly diagnosed one because those are the ones that most people seek care for. And what that is is a unilateral, meaning usually one, one side, side, throbbing headache that lasts mm -hmm. hours and hours. Okay, yeah. very difficult problem to have. Most migraines are multiple times throughout the month. Yes. We see they about are. To truly be diagnosed with migraines has got to be about 15 per month. So that tells you it's quite often. Yeah, and patients are. suffer significantly from migraines. Yeah. And there's a lot of different causes for migraines as well. They can be hormone-based. Yep. Uh, they can be traumatically based in regards to I had some trauma and I've had um, headaches since, or migraines since then. Um, and you know, there's just a lot of different reasons that can cause migraines as well. Menstruation. Yep. That is why women get more migraines than men. It's a change in their hormones. The monthly cycle that women go through changes their hormones. So stress is the number one cause of migraines. About 80% of all migraines actually come from stress. Mm -hmm. All right. That's where work becomes an issue or relationships can cause stress on you. Um, worrying about your children, worrying about uh, your, your parents, anything. The stress is about 80% of the cause of all migraines. And there's also some things that are associated with migraines that can be of concern, right? So yep. there's always things that we have to rule out before we move forward with care or we move forward with a specific diagnosis. Yeah, but before um, we go into the, you know, the, the dangerous part of the headaches, let's mm -hmm. finish up with the other ones. We got cluster headaches. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. Jumping ahead. You're fine. <laughs> cluster headaches. So this one is a, a very broad group of headaches and it's usually one-sided and it's also unilateral. But the one thing side. is with cluster headaches is they're very severe and they're called orbital or periorbital because they're in this region and it just feels like your eyes gonna come out of socket. And that's a very severe, painful, painful headache. And it's one of the rarer ones, but it's one of the big four that we normally talk about along with secondary headaches. Yes. Secondary headaches. Now this type of headache is caused by something else. That's why it's second, right? Yes, it's secondary. Um, uh, one of the more common ones we see here is uh, TMJ yep. type secondary headaches. So you have a headache, but it's because of your TMJ joint or ear issues there. Um, there's a lot of other causes that we can get headaches. It could be uh, food allergies can actually cause headaches. Um, and I mean, golly. There was a big study in Brazil at their primary care. They noted about 39% of secondary headaches are from fever. Fever. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Common fever yeah. can cause a headache. There's multiple things, sinus problems. People yes. talk about your sinuses Ooh, are real one. stuffy mm -hmm. and then you get a headache. It's because of your sinus. And that's yeah. why I say secondary, Those are secondary. headache. They're, yeah. they're, they're a headache, but they're caused by something else. So it's not about treating the headache specifically. It's a cause. It's about treating what's causing the headache. Yeah. Um, and that's definitely what's a secondary headache. And you talk about treating headaches. The big thing we need to do is evaluate the headache for the big warning signs. You know, typically people have headaches and they deal with them. It's nothing that severe. But when we do have this, what they call a thunderclap, the worst headache of your life, just excruciating yes. pain, mm -hmm. those are what we call red flags. Those are issues that we want to look for because that could be actual a hemorrhage in the brain. Now, this is a picture of your brain and the multiple blood vessels carried through there. If one of them was to leak blood, you would get this thunderclap headache 
because of the pressure being placed on your brain because there's blood outside of the blood vessels. And what they mean by thunderclap is it's sudden. Um, most of the time you don't know when thunder's coming unless it kind of rumbles ahead of time, but you all of a sudden just hear that really loud rumble. And so thunderclap headaches, it is, it is instant from one yep. moment to the next. You're like, whoa, what's happening? Or, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can, you can experience that, but it's very sudden uh, when that happens. Yeah. So some of the, the other things that we also need to worry or rule out is like carbon dioxide poisoning, mm -hmm. uh, even a traumatic brain injury. You know, if somebody has a headache, we always want to ask, well, did you fall? Did you hit your head? Did you get in a car accident? Things of that nature as far as what actually is causing it, or is it more of a true traditional headache that uh, needs treatment? Yes. Again, so, uh, you know, we talked about the sudden onset. We need to rule out that there's not something bigger happening, but then sometimes it's actually something quite simple that's causing uh, the headache. Um, so we actually are going to talk about structure. Yeah. So sometimes the headache is actually from structure or how we're built and something's out of place or something's pulling more than others, so there's an imbalance there. Um, so sometimes it can be actually more of a structural issue when we talk about headaches, whether it be from one of the first three or a secondary headache. Uh, so structural issues are always a common thing, especially when we talk about uh, bone, ligament, tendon, or muscle. So we can have pulls in different directions causing issues. And that's part of those tension headaches, yes. right? Yeah, you exactly. look at this bones, but then here you have nerves coming yes. through, and if those muscles are very tight, and they rubbing on there, you can have tension headaches. Correct. Absolutely. And so it could also be a neurologic issue in regards to tension on the nerve root or from uh, the uh, nervous system itself. So yeah, there's a lot of different things that can cause or be affected by headaches. Um, it's really just a matter of ruling them out and figuring out what it is that's causing it so that you can better address the problem. Yeah. But if you know you have headaches and you're suffering through them, what are some of the things that you can do at home? Like the self-care tips mm -hmm. and tricks that most people want to know about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's just a lot out there. One of the first things that pe people typically go to are over-the-counter things or supplements. Um, so supplements is a great one. I know turmeric root is a great, ground turmeric is a great natural anti-inflammatory. So if you know the type of headache you have and it's something that you can recover from quickly, um, it's more likely a tension type headache. So the anti-inflammatory is a great option. And then also sometimes it's from nutritional deficiencies. We can have headaches because our body is trying to get things. So um, you know, it's great to have a blood test to see what, what you're deficient in. Um, ice packs, sometimes tension headaches, it's just inflammation somewhere. It's just recovery. It's, it's, it's about just supporting the body and, and allowing you to get through that process. So ice packs are great or a cute puppy. Um, you know, endorphins are a phenomenal treatment for just about anything. So cute puppies are always a great option. A lot of the headaches that we have as far as how we actually treat them with medication is with the blood as far as blood pressure. And this cold pack right there will actually help relieve that. Yes, yes, absolutely. More natural. And then also sometimes we're light sensitive with our headaches. If, no matter what type of headache it is, light sensitivity is an issue. So with that shared, just find a, a, a quiet, dark place, cover your eyes if you have that option and relax, breathe deep, make sure there's good airflow because you talked about carbon monoxide poisoning. Yeah. So make sure you have great airflow, it's quiet, have soothing music, um, absolutely. So a lot of times with headaches, it's a matter of just relaxing and calming it down. Just we look at that, that as far process. as 80% of migraines are caused from stress. So mm -hmm. this is a key point right here. Relax. Yeah. Get out of that environment. Get out of that, what we call the trigger, what's causing the headache, whether it's, you know, from allergies or whether it's from the light or whether it's just stress or situation, get out of there and relieve yourself of that trigger so that you don't have a continued migraine that's going to last and last and be very difficult to treat. Yes, because they can get difficult to treat the longer. So Lonnie, we talked about a lot of things that we, they, you know, what causes headaches, the different structures involved, uh, things, you know, from a, you know, modern medicine type standpoint, what would be the standard of care when we talk about treating? So headaches? we know that the most common headache is the tension. So we want to do a muscle relaxer. Any type of non shortal anti-inflammatory patients oftentimes respond very well to a Motrin or a Tylenol, and they have a wide range of Excedrin. It's another, it's aspirin, but also with caffeine will really help relieve some of those issues. But then when we move into actual medications that you can prescribe, it's always a hit and miss. You know, when patients come up with um, migraines, there's so many different options, there's so many different uh, drugs that people can take because everybody responds a little bit different. You know, we have a long list, a long algorithm that we can go through. I mean, there's tryptans, there's ergotamines, there's multiple different ones, but they basically all do the same thing. They help maintain the blood pressure within the brain. All right. That is uh, the big 
problem with it is that you're having this, this throbbing headache. That is because you're, uh, you feel that rush and that pressure go through with each beat of your heart. Now there's a new medication that's very low on the side effect range that most patients are enjoying now because they did not like the side effects of the triptans or ergotamine. So some of them you had to take as a shot and can make you feel very um, tired or woozy afterwards. And it's a peptide. It's actually a gene uh, calcitonin gene therapy peptide. Great response. Patients are, are doing fine with that because it doesn't have the bad side effects. But it does this right here. It functions with the brain. Helps regulate the transmission of the vasoconstrictors, which are the ones that constrict your blood vessels and the vasodilators which relax your blood vessels so the new therapy really helps mediate that so where you're not going back and forth back and forth as the other medications that's what would happen your body would swing one way and you'd have a migraine and then the medication would swing you back the other way and you would just feel horrible as you're trying to get over this and it just most patients just did not like it mm -hmm. absolutely and it doesn't sound pleasant either no so one of the great things about what you're sharing is a lot of times patients go through that and then they want additional help or they don't know what other options exist. And so a uh, part of why we do Medical Monday is so people know out there, there are other options. Um, so one of the things we can do here in the office are So what we, want, what we can do is actually uh, deaden that nerve. So that nerve that runs along the back of your head, there's two of them. One covers this side, one covers this side. That's why most headaches are what we say unilateral. They're on one side. But you can actually numb that that uh, nerve to where it's not sending this painful sensation that you're having. Instead of you know, swinging you one side to the other with, with medication, you know, what you can do is very easily just numb that nerve to where it's not having its symptoms. Because yep. you get that tension and that pressure from uh, your other soft tissue, and that's where you get these tension headaches from. Mm -hmm. And it's not always one nerve. What you actually see in image here is a visualization of two different nerves getting an injection. Um, so there are different options in regards to figuring out what nerve it is that's causing most of the issue because it's usually one-sided. So that makes it quite convenient and yep. easy to, uh, to do correct. Uh, one of the other causes of headaches is tension. And one of the great uh, therapies we offer is trigger point injections. Trigger point. Uh, so when tension is the issue, it's because your shoulders are connected to your ears. Um, and so we need to relax that and loosen it up. Trigger point injections is a phenomenal natural anti-inflammatory that we inject directly into the muscle. It is actually made of botanical, so the body actually responds to it and it's easily absorbable. Um, and so it's a very comfortable process actually. Um, and so that is an option when we talk about- tension. I like it because we talk about the other medications, just swinging your blood pressure, yeah. your, your, you know, from being migraine and then no migraine with the medication and you feel really bad afterwards. Uh, we always want to ask, well, what are the side effects of what we're going to do? Mm -hmm. uh, and the number one side effect that we see with trigger points are decreasing pain. That's a great side effect yes. to have. You it don't is. have any other bad side effects. Mm -hmm. And that is the great thing. It's very safe and effective for patients. Yeah, absolutely. And then adjustments. Uh, adjustments are actually a phenomenal asset in regards to correcting headaches. Um, a lot of our patients actually that come in, I had one today. She waited too long to come in and came in with a headache and it had actually kind of spiraled into some little low back symptoms. Um, I'd say within like 60 seconds, 90 seconds of getting adjusted, she was like, wow, I can actually see again. So adjustments are a phenomenal tool to help manage and maintain and actually sometimes uh, you know, remove the uh, effects of a, a headache. So when we talk about structural causes, when we talk about neurologic causes, adjustments are a phenomenal resource to utilize. And we can use our hands, as many of you know, to do more manual adjustment or tools um, to actually help be a little bit more gentle because sometimes you don't necessarily want somebody uh, adjusting you manually. And then also a lot of patients don't know or people actually in general don't understand there is a huge gut brain connection. Um, and so when we talk about certain types of headaches and what causes them and the different triggers, there's a huge gut brain connection when we talk about headaches. So that is actually one of the things we can address here in the office. And uh, so I think it's a phenomenal tool. We've seen great results with it as well. And so if that is something that's going on, then absolutely, let's take care of it. That gut brain connection, you know, it goes along with the triggers. So mm -hmm. if you're not sleeping right, your gut's not right. If you're not eating right, your gut's not right. All yeah. of those revert back to what is the trigger? Something's causing this. It's not natural for us to just have a headache. Mm -hmm. Something's causing it. What is it? And we always want to get to the root of it when we're trying to help a patient out. It's yeah. always best to get to the root of what it is. Of course, we can treat it with medication. Of course, we can inject it. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, there's other things we can do. But really, what's the trigger? 
watch the trigger so that you can yeah. stop it from happening. Yeah, let's address the problem from the root cause yeah. so that it doesn't keep coming back. Yeah. I always like to joke about, I don't like to duct tape patients back together. No, I want to fix it. I want to like, let's stabilize it so it doesn't keep happening. Absolutely. So, so that, that's Medical Monday. That's Medical Monday you on headaches. The four main types of headaches that there are, they actually account for about 90% of what people have. Mm -hmm. And um, of those, you know, we talked about migraines, the number one diagnosed one. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's so many treatment options for it. But there's other headaches out there. Tension headaches are actually the most common one that most people just kind of suffer through. Yes. Great options across the board. There's multiple treatments. I hope you guys learned a lot about what causes them along with the treatments. Yes, absolutely. We'll see you next time. Next Monday. See Bye. you. Bye.